Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 classic Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for the Great Piggy Bank Robbery and with me today are my good friends Huey Nelson, Manny Cruz, Austin Kelly and Blue Genocide. Say hi. Hello everybody. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Hi everybody. So this is the Great Piggy Bank Robbery released in 1946. It's a 578th in the series and it's directed by Bob Clampett. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 2 DVD set and on the Platinum Collection Volume 1 Blu-ray set. Now in case you haven't seen this masterpiece, it's pretty straightforward. So Daffy is all excited to get his latest comic book issue of Dick Tracy and he gets way too excited and ends up having a dream where he is Duck Twacy and he is out to solve the mystery of the missing piggy banks. So what you're about to see is a remix of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take it down due to a request by Warner Brothers Legal. I'll also be including some audio from the Bob Clampett Part 2 retrospective. So grab some popcorn and enjoy. From here. Was that trip really necessary? If uh, Eliza is watching this, aka Duck Tracy on Twitter, you know, she's an amazing artist. You should really go follow her. This is her namesake. This is one of her favorite cartoons, so, you know. I also got to yep. say, this might be one of the most violent uh, Looney Tunes cartoons ever because Daffy just shot down all those people. <laughs> There's an actual body. I was just covered. about to say, I, I, I just, it just came to realizations like, wow, Daffy's a, Daffy's if a murderer. You, I, if you freeze frame this uh, cartoon, I freeze frame this. I, I think one of those was a woman. I was like, wait, huh? The John K commentary. Yeah, that one's a bit of a bit of a weird one. So... Unless you're a completist like me revisiting all this, I'd probably say no. Don't listen to it. He does say a very interesting line, which will probably haunt him since the accusations came out. But yeah, I don't want to go into too much about John Kay. But he does say one thing, and one thing, and I totally agree with him, this is a masterpiece and one of the greatest cartoons ever made. And I, yeah, you have to agree with him at least on that. So just a few facts before we get right into this masterpiece, and it is definitely a masterpiece. Um, the whole... Uh, you, you hear, you'll hear uh, two lines in this cartoon. Um, you'll hear Daffy Duck in a moment saying, you know, love that man. And let, and in the end, you'll hear a pig saying, love that duck, which is from um, Fibber McGee. And apologies for my American accent. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> um, this is, of course, a Dick Tracy parody, which is from a comic strip by Chester Gould. And more importantly and sadly, this is the last Daffy Duck by uh, Bob Clampett. And also the last credited Bob Clampett short. Not too long after Schlesinger um, uh, sold the studio to Warner Brothers, Clampett left not long after anyway. And yeah. yeah I'm just going to say, I love the, I like, I like you see this scene right here, this energetic pacing right here. I don't know what it is when it comes to Clampett cartoons. And Mel Blanc just seems, his acting is just more, it's like they put, he wants, like, he, he does a lot more yelling. When it comes to the Clampett shorts, and just he's more energetic here, like you can, they, they spiked his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Probably there was actually even a silhouette where, um, you know, when Daffy's saying, you know, I'm going to pin it on you, see, I'm going to pin it on you. You can see very brief moments a sil silhouette of the Chester Gould drawing of uh, of uh, Dick Tracy, and as we see uh, another <laughs> detective here, you know, which is a great <laughs> gag, like. Why would Sherlock be here? I don't know, but but hey, it's it's still pretty good. Just this scene right here where he says, uh, "Is that trip really necessary?" Uh, you, they make they actually make a reference to World War II, which already ended. But you know, they're still gonna still gonna make a couple of jokes here and there. These are of course Dick Tracy villain like parodies, and you know they're done done in the style of uh, what the Dick Tracy villains would have looked like because his villain gallery um, rivals that of even Batman's, in my opinion. Just 
wild and crazy villains. And if you've seen the movie from 1990, like that's they got it right in that in that regard. But such fantastic designs, and just for what a few seconds of screen time, if anything, it, it's, it's just incredible. It's also amazing how some of these characters they had to design all these characters just for this single cartoon. Like this is like a bunch of characters. Just yeah, that not, you're not even gonna see these characters again. And this Porky right here he makes an appearance, his final appearance in a clamp. It. Yeah, it's funny that you know. I don't know. Maybe it's got something, a little bit of a connection to Daffy Doodles a little bit there. Maybe McKinson got the idea because of that mustache that that not Porky had. <laughs> exactly. In fact, my favorite shot in this cartoon is probably the least animated of all. It's just a guy that's just, it's just a background and it's just got a few planes taken off the, the uh, guy's head. And it's like, yeah. I'm going to rub you out, Steve. And furthermore, it's unbelievable. Oh. This cartoon is specifically especially in his Daffy cartoons. This is the most fast-paced, most zany Daffy cartoon in existence compared to the other two. This one right here. Definitely one I saw often growing up. It definitely deserves all the hype it gets. Um, Huey, I was thinking of you just now because you're saying like this is like clamp it at its absolute peak. And I'm thinking all the cartoons we were talking before it, I was thinking of Dragon Ball, and it was like, this isn't even my final form. And, you know, this is, <laughs> you know, clamp it at 100% power, battling on Namek, and there's my Dragon Ball reference for the day. Absolute classic. Gold reference right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Gold like a Super Saiyan. All right, anyway. <laughs> but the phone scene, just when Daffy is fielding all the calls and and then you're hearing powerhouse playing in the background i know we don't like well we have to bring it up anyway but you know john k when he does the commentary and he talks about how and probably i'm misremembering it but like none of these drawings work by themselves like individually like the the posing and everything is just all over the place but yet it comes together so beautifully and just that the the, the panic and nervousness that, that Daffy's getting and, and he starts breaking all the phones. I'm Doc Twifey. Or, you know, I, I love the little gag where he starts, uh, he talks on the French phone and you hear the Latin quarter playing about, ha, ah, French phone. I always got a nice kick out of that. I really do like in the beginning too when he gets the Dick Tracy comic. I mean, cheap joke coming. Uh, this is, you know, whenever Austin buys a new comic book, he reacts the same way. And he gets all excited and uh <laughs> but i just love the it's like seeing that childlike enthusiasm coming out of daffy just reading his dick tracy comic and being so excited and you know um you guys were saying before it's just like clamp it was if i'm not mistaken he was the youngest director yeah he was the youngest director at the time and just letting that childhood enthusiasm and how appropriate you know a bunch of us talking about cartoons you know and just seeing our enthusiasm come out and i think clamp it was the best at expressing that joy and that energy throughout his stuff speaking as like a a comic book nerd like i do relate to daffy so much here especially when i was a kid and i would have been watching this one around the same time i was getting very much so so enamored with like the idea that i could just have comic books like delivered to my door with like ebay and like subscription mail stuff when i was like six or seven like this was so cool to see like you know one of the coolest cartoon characters i'd ever known like literally acting just like i would when a comic would show up in the mail and that's just like the tip of the iceberg that's only setting up for the best part of the cartoon where you get into it and there are all these great villains with duck twacy i mean there's so much to love about it i could go on and on honestly but i gotta say when i was watching this one i was almost thinking like Daffy's never characterized like this, like as the kid that Clampett makes him look like here. I was almost thinking that Clampett was sort of trying to make Daffy feel like Bob Clampett, right? Because from all the recollections we hear about Clampett, he's like this very crazy, like, guy stuck in like the mindset of a teenager or almost a kid i'm almost wondering if like this specific characterization is supposed to relate to clamp its own personality which i know is like a bit far-fetched but i was thinking about that when i was re-watching it earlier but yeah great piggy bang robbery really really fantastic cartoon 
As for the rating, well, I'm going to make an assumption this time from all the guests involved in this video. They're going to all give a 10 out of 10, because if they don't, they're in big trouble. No, seriously, this is a masterpiece, as we've said numerous times. I mean, you can do a, perhaps a drinking game and it wouldn't turn out pretty well in the end. But, wow, if you can as well, especially if you're a budding animator, watch this frame by frame and you will not regret it. And just to wrap things up, um, we'll start off with you, Blue. Um, any final thoughts on this cartoon? It's just wonderful. Um, Clampett left on the top of this game. This is a masterpiece. This is Clampett. This is, he went out with a bang. <laughs> so, so, uh, so clearly I'm asking a silly question, aren't I? But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I remember this one, yeah, it's not only a masterpiece, it's also a childhood favourite. I remember seeing it on VH, on a VHS, just, and I watched it over and over, and yeah, it's definitely one of the best things. And that wraps up another video, so thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.